On the occasion of the kickoff of the Silver Spitfire, the longest flight supported by IWC, we thought we'd take a closer look at the watch that the two British pilots flying the Silver Spitfire will be wearing. The Pilot's Watch Time Zoner Spitfire Edition, the longest flight. On first sight, the easy call to make is that the Time Zoner is some sort of a multi-time zone watch. The clue there being the city ring that you have on its ceramic bezel. And while it is that, there is much more to the Time Zoner. Unlike Louis Cotier type World Time watches, the city ring on the Time Zoner has a rather unique function. What you have is a bi-directional ceramic bezel, which when turned will change the time, date, and 24 hour display to show you the time at the time zone represented by the city that is aligned at 12 o'clock. On the occasion of the Silver Spitfire, the longest flight, IWC's issued a 250 piece limited edition with the time zoner function, which is the Pilot's Watch Time Zoner Spitfire Edition, the longest flight. Let's have a closer look at the watch, starting with the ceramic bezel. There are 24 cities listed on it, each representing a principal time zone. You'll notice that some cities have a small dot with the letter S in them. These are time zones that have daylight savings. So within daylight savings months, when turning the bezel to these time zones, you should be turning the watch to the dots next to the city name rather than the city itself. This way, the mechanism corrects itself to show you the right time during daylight savings. Next, you have the 24-hour display which serves as a day-night indicator to the primary time display. And lastly, we have the date, which you will have to adjust on the last day of months with lesser than 31 days. This adjustment can be made by an even press on the bezel, then a complete turn to advance the date view. Cool? So let's try to set the watch. A general rule of thumb is that you twist clockwise when you're moving eastward and anti-clockwise when you're moving westward. I'm in Singapore right now. My UTC plus 8 city of reference is Beijing on the bezel. So let's move Beijing to the 12 o'clock position. And we'll do this with an even press on the bezel and twist. Now, we pull the crown out to its second and last stop once the second hand is on the 60 second mark. This motion stops the movement. The second hand at 60 just allows us to set the time more accurately. Next, we turn the crown to set the time, making sure we have the 24 hour time display showing the right hour of the day and the date window is showing the right date. So it's just about to hit 10.07 in the morning here. We push the crown back to the first stop to allow the movement to start back up. Then, pushing down again, we turn anti-clockwise once to engage the screw down thread and then screw the crown down. Let's put the time zone or function to the test now. Say I need to make a call to our London offices. Thanks to the bi-directional bezel, we make an even push to engage the mechanism and twist to the time zone of interest. London happens to be in daylight savings at the time of filming, so rather than the city itself, we move the bezel to align with the dot next to London at 12 o'clock. Next, say I gotta make a call to Adam in New York, Adam as in Adam Craniotes, our US editor. So, we make another even press on the bezel and twist to the dot next to New York, which also happens to be in daylight savings. And there you have it, the time in New York. Thanks for checking out the Pilot's Watch Time Zoner Spitfire Edition, the longest flight with us. This is Sumit from the Revolution team, signing off.